Hey there folks, Rel here. In the background you'll see some gameplay from Planetside 2 as I share some thoughts on better gaming. Recently, Planetside 2 added the ability to purchase weapon attachments with cash, and a lot of you are interested in my thoughts on that, and I'm only going to briefly touch on that here because honestly there's not a whole lot to talk about, but I would like to bring up another, probably more noteworthy discussion toward the end. So, to briefly cover this change for the audience who doesn't play Planetside 2, in Planetside 2, you have an in-game currency called Certification Points, as well as a real-life currency called Station Cash. Station Cash can be used to purchase weapons, cosmetics, and boosts, but until recently it was not able to purchase weapon attachments outside of scopes. Now, Planetside 2 revolves around side grades, so even though you can buy weapons, the game can't or couldn't be considered pay to win because you're not getting a direct advantage, you're just allowing yourself to be better and worse in different areas. And this of course is barring things like lock-on launchers, additional bursters, AV turrets, and other debatable things. The catch here is that weapon attachments were previously only unlockable by playing the game. In other words, unlockable by spending time in-game. Now that weapon attachments can be bought outright with station cash, that doesn't suddenly make these attachments more powerful than they were previously, it simply circumvents the need to spend the time to unlock them. So in other words, it trades cash for convenience, or cash for time spent. And this is the same way that purchasing a booster or a weapon does in the first place. So the short answer to the question that I receive most commonly is no, the game does not immediately become any more pay to win than it normally would have been because of this change. And I was having a conversation about this with Wycliffe Slim the other day, and he said, at the end of the day, what's the difference between dying to a battle rank 100 with a maxed out main battle tank that he started, or dying to a battle rank 1 that bought it all? And when it comes down to it, there really isn't one. Unlike many games where you're pitting one team against another, both on even footing, barring skill, like uh, Counter-Strike or Street Fighter or Dota for example, unlike those games, Planetside 2 is a persistent experience. It's been out for almost two years now, and there are already people who have everything unlocked standing right next to the people who have nothing unlocked. And we throw all those players, regardless of skill, rank, or unlocks, into the same arena and then let them fight amongst themselves. So what you're paying for is the ability to play catch up, the ability to bring yourself to the gear level of other players who are there already. And this isn't the best system, but it's because vertical progression exists in this game, it's not because you can pay to circumvent it. So there's a distinction that needs to be made. Right now you see free to play and pay to win thrown around a lot, but there's very little said about the middle ground, which for lack of a better term we'd call pay for convenience. In fact, I think that one of the reasons that we don't talk about this middle ground so much is because pay for convenience isn't as much of a buzzword as free to play and pay to win, but it should be. An example of a true free to play game would be something like Dota, where every purchase is strictly cosmetic, has no gameplay value. They also sell things like tickets to view tournaments, but again, it has no impact on the gameplay. A pay for convenience title would be something like Planetside 2 where everyone in the game is thrown at the same place to fight, some people have more gear, some people have less gear, and any advantages that someone would get by having something unlocked that another player doesn't is fleeting at best, because everyone unlocks them eventually. A pay to win game would be something like Battlefield Heroes, where the weapons you buy are literally more powerful than the ones you start out with. Example being your shotgun does more damage or your machine gun has more ammo, etc etc. So there's a difference, and it's important that we keep these distinctions in mind and spread around the proper terminology because nothing turns someone off to even trying out a game faster than finding out that it's pay to win. And the problem is that most games outside of cow clickers aren't pay to win, but we call them that because we don't have any easier, better way to explain things. The issue is far from black and white, and anyone who has played Planetside 2 or other pay for convenience games will understand that. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you agree or disagree, or if all I've done is just shift your hatred from pay to win to also include a hatred for pay for convenience, then leave those thoughts in the comment section down below. Many of you already know that I do not like the free-to-play model for various reasons, and if you're interested in hearing more about that, then you can check out some of the older videos on the left-hand side. Thanks very much folks, Rel signing off.